Dick and John for that beautiful music for the offering. Our scripture reading today is from Luke chapter 1, verses 41 through 44. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and she was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the child in my womb leaped for joy. Remember this portion of God's word. Thanks be to God. Morning, everybody. Morning. When was the last time you leapt with joy? Really? Yesterday? You guys are awesome. My next question, question was, can you remember? But obviously you can, so. You know, I was trying to think this week, when was the last time that I leapt with joy? And honestly, I, I, I can't remember. Now, to be fair, I am a larger human being, and so jumping and leaping is not something that comes to mind for me all that much. So the question then becomes a little bit different. When was the last time that I felt joy? So as you know, I, I am a person who loves sport, and so I think about how sport has brought me joy. My mind cast back to just two weeks ago when little old Ireland played rugby against the world champion, mighty New Zealand All Blacks and we beat them. I felt joyful, yeah, thank come on. <laughs> I felt joyful pride in that moment. I think back to last Sunday when I skipped out on you all for just one week, just to go and run for 13 miles. Now, I would be lying if I said I felt any joy in any one of those miles, but at the end of them, I felt a sense of joyful achievement as I crossed that finish line. After that, I went home to watch my beloved Liverpool soccer team play against their local rivals in England, a team called Everton. The two teams played an exciting game against each other, but neither team managed to score a goal until, with the very last kick of the game, Liverpool somehow scored a goal seemingly from nowhere. In that moment, I experienced joy. Now, if I had not just completed a half marathon, I think I might actually have leapt for joy as well in that moment. You know, really and truly, these, uh, these are just unimportant, momentary experiences of joy, somewhat insignificant on the grand scheme of things. The experience of sporting victory or achievement might bring joy one week, but a very different result the next week can ensure that that joy will disappear very, very quickly. So what about real joy then? Deep, lasting joy. When have we experienced real joy? Think of the day Margaret and I got married. We experienced real joy. I think of the day that we found out that we were expecting Eva. I think of the day that we were, uh, found out we were expecting Jackson. I think of the days that Eva and Jackson were born, and I think that those are days of real joy in my life. I think about the days since with those three, and they've been filled with days which were in which great joy was experienced in our life together. Now, of course, we have had days when they were not so joyful as well, we all have it like that, right? I think of the day in the past year when Margaret and Jackson and myself finally became permanent residents of the United States after a couple of years of filling out forms and sending off checks and jumping through hoops. That was a day of great joy. I think of the day, well, thank you. I think of the day that I flew home to surprise my mom for her 70th birthday and the joy that we experienced in that reunion. These are moments of real joy. We all know what real joy is, don't we? So why don't we leap? Why don't we leap? 
We experience joy in life, but we do not really leap for joy, right? Now, maybe we are no longer physically able to leap for joy anymore. That's a reality. Or maybe, just maybe, we're a little bit too reserved to leap for joy. It's just not the kind of thing that we do. Joy is something that is supposed to be central to our experience of Jesus, central to our experience of the Christian faith. Now, quite often, we forget to tell our faces that, but joy is definitely supposed to be a part of our experience nonetheless. Think of the music that we listen to. Think of the songs that we sing together. Jesus, joy of man desiring. I come with joy to meet my Lord. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. I've got that joy, 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 joy. Where is it? Down in my heart. We sing about joy. <laughs> that was clever. <laughs> the scripture reminds us that it is, it is the joy of the Lord that will be our strength. It all reminds us also and calls us to be full of the joy of the Lord. And in this passage that we've read from Luke's gospel today, we see that a leap of joy is not outside the realms of possibility in the Bible. Two unlikely women, Elizabeth, who is way past childbearing years, and Mary, who is an unwed teenager, who is now pregnant by the Holy Spirit. They are a generation apart, but they are inseparably connected by how each would play a role in God's plan of salvation for the world. When Elizabeth hears Mary's voice, Elizabeth's unborn baby innately recognizes Jesus from the womb. The unborn child doesn't have the ability to communicate in human language or on an intellectual level, but can respond on a spiritual level. Divine communication, so to speak. Deep calling unto deep, as the, as the psalmist would put it. Spirit to spirit. It was like Elizabeth was having an internal dance party going on. The baby John recognized the baby Jesus, experienced joy, and had a dance party for womb, one in the womb to communicate it. The text says that Elizabeth exclaimed with a loud cry, like greeting a beloved one whom you haven't seen for a long time. I can imagine Elizabeth embracing Mary in that moment, shrieking in joy as she says these words, Oh, Mary, Mary, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the child in my womb leaped for joy. Think about this situation. Mary was a young, unwed woman who had mysteriously fallen pregnant. Now that might not raise too many eyebrows in the 21st century anymore, but in the first century world that Mary and Elizabeth lived in, it was a huge deal. Elizabeth could have shunned Mary. Elizabeth could have rejected her outright and poured scorn and shame upon her, but she didn't. In a world in which rejecting Mary was a likely response, Elizabeth greeted her extravagantly and with high levels of joy. In the midst of a very uncertain situation, in the midst of a quite violent and unjust world at the time, Elizabeth offered Mary sanctuary, a safe place in which she was welcomed and rejoiced over. And this is the reason that Mary could then express joy in the middle of what she was living through. And she did express joy. If you read on after the passage that we have read today, you will read that Mary broke out into joyful song, a song which lives on, is sung and spoken today every year at this time. My soul praises God and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for God has looked with favor on the lowliness of God's servant. Here we are, reading of two women who find themselves in extraordinary and even challenging circumstances. They share their stories with each other, and then they break out in joy together as they realize the incredible thing that God is doing among them. And all of this because a growing baby in the womb recognized Jesus 
and leapt for joy. It was the child which led them to joy. And friends, it's still the child, the Christ child, who leads you and me to joy today. Amen. Now that sounds really simple, doesn't it? It sounds like a simple equation, like, like we learn when we're four years old. Two plus two equals four. My life plus Jesus equals joy. Simple, right? Maybe it's not as simple as that, really. We live in a world in which death and illness take place. We live in a world that is violent. We live in a society sometimes where human life is undervalued. We're living in times in which hurricanes seem to blow stronger and become more devastating. Times in which forest fires burn faster and seem more out of control than before. We live in an age when relationships seem to be treated as if they are disposable. And we appear to be happy to see the demise of those who do not look like us or think like us. There's an opioid addiction crisis ravaging families in our nation. Mental health difficulties and struggles are becoming normal in life. And rates of suicide are rising year on year. We see situations of war and starvation in the world around us. Sometimes right even here on our own doorsteps and in our own neighborhoods. As we look around our nation, our community, as we look around our world, we can all see and understand that joy is not something that is just a part of a simple equation in life. We understand that sometimes joy can be difficult to experience and to find. So in those moments, if that's where you're at right now, in this moment, when it seems that we are gripped by what's wrong around us, we cannot seem to experience this joy that we're talking about, in these moments, then it's time to return to a passage of Scripture like this and to be reminded that it is the child who led Mary and Elizabeth to joy in the midst of their strange and difficult circumstances. And because the child did that, they could each sing with joy and know that the song of joy is louder and stronger and more persistent than anything else that is going on around us. Because the song of joy is sung in the knowledge that God has not left us alone in this chaotic, violent, and unpredictable world. God has not left us alone. God has joined us in this world. God is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And God will lead us into songs of joy, even in the most broken and devastating of times and circumstances on a world scale or in our own lives as we live them day by day. Despite her fears, despite the dangers that she faced in her particular circumstances, Mary experienced joy. Because really and truly, friends, joy is something that is independent of our circumstances. Joy is a choice that we make to look at present circumstances through the lenses of our Christian faith. Knowing that God is with us. Trusting that God is at work in us and all around us. So here's my encouragement to you today. It's to take stock of your life. To take stock of the world around you and to remember that God has not left the world alone with it all. God has moved towards the world. God has joined us in this world, joins each and every one of us in it so that we might know the deep and unexplainable joy of God's presence with us and God's work in and through us in all things. Amen? So let that make you leap for joy today because it is staggeringly good news, my friends. We are not alone. God is is with us and God will never leave us or forsake us. And so here's the challenge. 
as you receive this joy today through a spoken word, through the scripture read, through a prayer prayed, or through a song sung, as you have received this joy today, maybe you will leave church and you will become one like Elizabeth, who greeted Mary with an extravagant, warm welcome, and who made her heart leap for joy and sing for joy. Maybe you will be like the one in Elizabeth's womb, an unborn child named John who recognized Jesus and leapt for joy. Be the agents of joy in the world this week. Look for it, find it, and share it. I finish off today with a story. We had some friends visiting with us this weekend, and we went out for dinner last night. We went to Cafe Caribou. It was lovely. We had a great meal there. And halfway through our meal, we were laughing and talking to one another, sharing our stories and catching up. And I noticed out of the corner of my eye that someone else from our church had come to eat there too. Jennifer Broussard was there. And this little girl came from one table over to Jennifer's table, and she gave her these Christmas glasses with funny lenses in them that meant whenever you looked up at the light through these lenses, the light would look different and beautiful and pretty. Her name was Hadley. She went to Jennifer and said, gave her the glasses and said, light. And then she took the glasses back and she skipped around to the person that Jennifer was having dinner with that night and she gave her the glasses and she said, light. And then she came over to our table and she went around the four of us giving us the glasses and saying, light. You know what? Little Hadley last night went on a mission to be an agent of joy. And I'm pretty sure that she went around every single adult who was sat at a table in that restaurant. And God bless her mum because her mum followed her all the way. (laughs) Sharing joy. Inviting ordinary people like you and me to look through different lenses and to see the world in a different light and to see something beautiful. That's the joy that we look for this Advent. That's the joy that is the gift of the people of faith to this world. As we journey towards hope, towards joy, towards peace and love, as we journey towards the arrival of the King of Kings, born in a manger, born so that we could be agents of godly joy. That's the challenge this week, friends. Go out and invite the world to look through different lenses, to see and to experience joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me?